This is Prime Crime Network. This Friday, we begin with this, a case that has left a community stunned and heartbroken. A well-known St. Pete realtor is dead and her sister is in jail, charged with murder. Well, tonight we're hearing from some of their friends and Fox 13's Aaron Mesmer is live for us at the Pinellas County Jail tonight. And Aaron, I mean, this is a, a wild story. It's, it's not often that you hear of, of a sister being accused of murdering a, her sister. So what are friends telling you tonight? Well, they are shocked, Allie. They're shaken that this even happened. I mean, these are two sisters who had a real positive impact on a lot of people and on the entire community where they lived. And you can imagine why they are, are so surprised that now one of those sisters is charged with killing the other. Communities being uprooted and disenfranchised. That's Dr. Cherie Howard telling Fox 13 her thoughts last year about plans for Tropicana Field. Cherie Howard is now in jail. I'm still in disbelief. Um, I'm shocked. Charged with killing her sister, Sherry Howard. She was the type that, that pushed sisterhood. And for her to leave this way, you know, by the hands of her sister, I mean, I send my prayers to the whole family. Sherry was a realtor in St. Pete and a friend of Sonia Brookins, who's currently in a runoff election for Tampa City Council. She calls Sherry an inspiration and made this decision after learning about her death. I'm going to dedicate this campaign to her memory because it is people like her that have pushed me to continue to do things that, that need to be done. Sherry, meanwhile, is a family doctor. Neighbors say she and Sherry were living together at a house on Newton Avenue in St. Pete. According to the police report, Sherry called 911 Tuesday and said she had just choked her sister to death at their home. Friends never even saw the two argue. And that's something that has really got me kind of shocked as well. She, she, when she talked about her sister, it was always a positive light. The interactions, you, you know, were, were, were very great. St. Pete City Councilman, Brother John Muhammad, knew Sherry well and says she was a fierce advocate for her community. For those who know her commitment to social justice um, and advocacy to, to honor her, uh, I think would be to continue in the work that she did. It's a way for Sherry's friends to honor the impact she had on their lives. I'm just thankful that I was blessed to have her come across my path. Yeah, and neighbors and friends tell us that the sisters really always seemed supportive of one another, Allie, and that is why this is such a shock to everybody who knew them. Oh, just heartbreaking. Crime, crime network. It was exclusive. Tonight, new body camera video capturing the fatal police shooting of a homeowner in New Mexico. The videos from April 5th show three Farmington officers responding to a domestic violence report around 11.30 p.m., identifying themselves as police three times. Farmington police. But the department says officers went to the wrong address. It might have been 4308. Is it 43 or 53? Or, yeah, it might have been 5308. 52-year-old Robert Dotson opens his front door wearing a robe. Investigators say pointing a gun at police. Heads up! All three officers fired their weapons. I'm oh, good. I'm oh, good. I'm good. Dotson died at the scene. One down at the doorway. His wife is heard screaming inside. Please don't. Matt! Appearing to open the door when police say she begins firing. Get her in cuffs! Minutes later, she surrendered. Where's the gun at? Uh, he dropped it and then she picked it up and pointed it at us. Upstairs are two children heard on a 911 call released by the Farmington Police Department. There were gunshots in the house and my dad is shot. The police chief offered his condolences the next day. Mr. Dotson was not the subject of the call that our officers were responding to. And this ending is just unbelievably tragic. I'm extremely sorry that we are in this position. The department is not naming the three officers who are now on paid administrative leave. It is a tragedy, no, no doubt. Former police chief Carmen Best, who watched the video, says the shooting appears to be consistent with police training. I would not expect my officer to have a gun pointed in their direction and not react. A reaction stemming from a mistaken address now being investigated by state police. Crime, crime network. It was exclusive. It was exclusive. It was exclusive. I lost my son. I lost mine. But God, please, 
please let them go home to their family. Amid their own pain, a prayer for overdose victims still fighting to live and a message. And I'm telling you, every parent, every parent, Start getting in your children's business. I don't care how old they are. Margaret Anderson's baby, Steve Williams, was 32. He and an older cousin both overdosed Thursday in a vehicle on Vine Street and died. He walked that walk. He gave to the poor. He gave to people out of his heart. He did that. And he loved his family. Steve Williams also loved carpentry. He'd fix homes for free and fishing on the Allegan Dam. He had lost a close family member, struggled with alcohol and cocaine, says his family, but had gone through drug court and been sober for two years until a moment of weakness and cocaine laced with fentanyl. Now his mom and uncle are calling for answers, justice, and reaching out to other families devastated by fentanyl. Let's figure out a way for us to get together as a collective, heal together, mm -hmm. grieve together, and, and come up with right a solution. Thing. Do the right to thing. To come up with a solution to get rid of this demon that's, that's terrorizing Kalamazoo. And that demon is his fentanyl. He cares so much for other people more than he cared for himself. Steve Williams' sister had this message for her beloved brother who faltered. I'm a little angry. But I still love you, and I'm here. And I wish, I wish you could be here, too. I wish you had one more chance. We're going to get through it, OK? We're going to get through this. Steve Williams' mom, whose Facebook page is under Marg Pratt, that's M-A-R-G-P-R-A-T-T, -T, is asking other families to reach out to her. His uncle, Chan Pratt, is calling on police and prosecutors to track down the criminals who peddled poison to his nephew, ending forever the recovery Steve Williams worked so hard to achieve. Crime, crime network. It was exclusive. Neighbors along the 300 block of Glenview Street in Philadelphia's Mayfair section say the street is normally quiet. I lived here like 31 years of my life and I never really heard anything like this so close to home. This incident happened on September 11th of 2020 at about 3.30 a.m. Police were called for a shooting inside of a home. I heard a good six to eight gunshots. Um, and then next thing I know, I heard a car flying down the driveway. Upon arrival there, they find a deceased. He's in the living room. He's been shot in the face and chest and uh, subsequently pronounced dead. The man killed was 24-year-old Terry Singletary. Those living on the block don't want to show their faces until his killer is caught. We don't know why, what, how, who, why it happened, you know, it's so close to home. Investigators say four men broke in through a basement door. Police say drugs were found in the home as well as six nine millimeter shell casings. So the police are hoping that maybe somebody at this hour of the morning looked out the window, saw something, maybe heard something in the neighborhood subsequent and uh, they could use this information to help solve the case. The city of Philadelphia is offering up to $20,000 in reward money for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible. All you have to do is call the Citizens Crime Commission at 215-546-TIPS. All calls will remain anonymous. Thank you for watching Prime Crime Network, your source for urban and suburban and around the world news. Hit the subscribe, like, and the notification bell. And check us out on Prime Crime Network.